guys, it's Vanille, and welcome to today's video, and welcome to another WWE reaction. This video is recommended by Instant Human. His name is Chris, actually. He edited one of my podcast videos on Patreon as well. Hi, Instant. And he said, Goldberg was my dad's favorite wrestler. Also, I asked you before, so I'll ask again. Please react to Stone Cold Steve Austin's bell to bell by tap out corner. You were not the only one. There were a lot of people who asked me and genuinely I thought I already did react to it. I was like, did I not already react to this? Because I did react to like Stone Cold, some type of documentary as well as catchphrases. And I got confused. So here we go. I saw that I haven't reacted to it. So let's go and check out Steve Austin's career. First and last matches in WWE by tap out corner. <laughs> Before he was Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Texas Rattlesnake was Stephen James Williams. When he was 7 or 8 years old, Austin accidentally discovered wrestling while changing channels on his TV. Instantly, the Rattlesnake was hooked and knew what he wanted to do. Stone Cold continued to watch wrestling as he grew older and finally got a chance to step into the ring when he found a school in Dallas, Texas, run by a man named Gentleman Chris Adams. The Rattlesnake struggled when he began training, but he didn't quit. Soon, he began competing in the ring using his real name, Steve Williams. However, there was another wrestler with the same name, Dr. Death Steve Williams. Ah. Stone Cold had to change his name, so he ended up going with Steve Austin, which is what he'd be called for for the rest of his career. Yeah. Soon, Austin got the opportunity to wrestle in WCW, where he called himself Stunning Steve Austin. He had a solid run, winning several championships and forming a tag team called the Hollywood Blondes with Brian Pillman. However, in 1995, Austin would be fired, infamously finding out when he got a letter via FedEx. With his WCW career behind him, Stone Cold would head to ECW. While in the land of extreme, Steve Austin began to develop so the rebellious, loudmouth hair. character he would use in WWE. Speaking of WWE, that's where Austin would head to next. In January 1996, Ted Why DiBiase said he found exactly. someone that could wear the Million Dollar Championship. Ooh. That person ended up being Stone Cold Steve Austin, yeah. or as he was called at the time, the Ringmaster. After the glowing introduction, Austin would compete in his first WWE match the next week. With the Million Dollar Championship around his waist and Ted DiBiase accompanying him, Steve Austin was prepared to take on his debut opponent, a young Matt Hardy. Once they locked up, Stone Cold oh. took down Hardy with ease. The Rattlesnake's first offensive move was the Luthez Press and Punches, which would become a signature move of Stone Cold's. Austin then hit Hardy with a back body drop, Oof. followed by several chops and punches in the corner. Oh. The Rattlesnake's assault continued with a move that kind of resembled Austin's iconic pointed elbow. Oh my God, Matt Hardy so cool. tried him out of combat Back, but Steve Austin fish. responded with a gourd buster. Stone Cold went for the pin, but changed his mind and wanted the match to continue. That was a mistake, oh. as Hardy dodged a running knee and started hitting oh, the rattlesnake with fists. Oh, we got cocky, huh? Huh? Uh huh? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Austin, though, ended his opponent's rampage by throwing him into the ropes and then locking Instant in the karma. Million Dollar Dream <laughs> sleeper hold. Matt Hardy quickly passed out, and Steve, Oi. the ringmaster Austin, oh. was awarded the victory. Technically, oh, okay. the match was just a squash, but it seemed to have a bit more to it, Still which was appreciated. No the craziest karma. part, though, is I that Matt back. Hardy was Steve Austin's debut opponent in WWE. While Austin debuted as the ringmaster, that name didn't last long. In real life, Steve Austin didn't like his character and decided to shave oh. off his hair and grow a goatee. He also developed a new persona based on a serial killer named Richard Kuklinski, whose nickname was the Iceman. Along with these changes, uh, Austin would also change his, his ring wife, name to Stone Cold yeah. Steve Austin. Like Only in the other video that I watched, it's like his wife said, like, do you want a Stone Cold... Uh beer i guess it's a i don't know in america i guess it's something to say like that, a really cold beer or something and then he said oh that's a really good name and he took it but i don't know if that's how it happens or this months after his first wwe match the ringmaster name would still be referenced but it soon faded away anyways stone cold's first feud was with savio vega they fought on raw with the match ending in a double count out they had a rematch at wrestlemania 12 which stone cold won However, Austin would lose their third match at the following pay-per-view. The Rattlesnake and Vega had a fourth fight with the ad stipulation that if Steve Austin lost, then Ted DiBiase would be forced to quit WWE. Stone Cold mm. did lose, which ended his alliance with DiBiase. While this mm. seemed like a setback, Austin's career was about to be taken to the next level. Steve Austin won the 1996 King of the Ring tournament by defeating Jake the Snake Roberts in the final round. Roberts was playing a born-again Christian character at the time, so Austin ad-libbed 
this famous line, iconic that. 316 catchphrase yeah. and helped push him as one of WWE's one. biggest stars. The Texas Rattlesnake was still a heel or bad guy at this point, and this was reflected over the next few months. Stone Cold would taunt Bret Hart, who was out of action. Once Bret returned, he accepted Steve Austin's challenge, setting up a match between them at Survivor Series. In the lead up, Brian Pillman was interviewing Steve Austin and inadvertently complimented the hitman, causing Stone Cold to attack Pillman and break his ankle. Later, Pillman was doing an interview from his home while recovering from the injury. Stone Cold would break in, leading to Brian Pillman pointing a gun at Steve Austin. Hey, this yo. was a very controversial segment and became known as Pillman's Got a Gun. While there was some backlash because of it, right the thing. segment didn't hurt Stone Cold's career. If anything, it did the opposite. At the 1996 Survivor Series, Stone Cold finally got his match against Bret Hart. The winner of the match also got a WWE Championship match, so the stakes were extremely high. Despite oh. all the trash talking Austin had done, he could not pin the hitman, yeah. and Bret Hart was the one who had his hand raised. Aww. The Royal Snake lost the battle, but his rivalry with Hart was far from over. Mm -hmm. At the 1997 Royal Rumble, both Steve Austin and Bret Hart entered the 30-man match. Hart yeah. did eliminate Stone Cold, but due uh, to the referees not seeing it, Steve Austin got back in the ring and ended up eliminating Cheater! Bret Hart and winning the match. Due to the controversial nature of Austin's victory and the fact that the WWE Championship had been vacated after the Royal Ooh, Rumble, Brett. Austin instead got to participate in a four-way match for the WWE title at the next yeah. pay-per-view in your house Tell 13. Their, Bret Hart was in that Brett. match as well, and the Hitman ended up oh. winning. Austin wasn't going to let that Baby. happen, so he decided Austin! to cost Bret Hart the championship. Just Accept your loss, brother! The next night, while Brett was defending it, the two finally got to go one on one again at WrestleMania 13. Okay. This is where an important part of Stone Cold's career happened. After throwing everything oh. at each other, this caused Bret Hart to turn heel and for Steve Austin to become oh. a face at the exact same oh. moment. Now that the roles reversed, Stone Cold would fight Bret Hart in another match at the next pay per view in your house 14. Due this. to the British Bulldog hitting Stone Cold with a chair, Steve Austin won the match and earned a shot at the Undertaker's WWE Game Championship. Like Before not facing even Deadman, however, Austin faced himself. Bret Hart for a fourth time on Raw. The match was ruled a no contest, but Stone Cold still ended the fight by injuring Bret Hart's leg. With the Hitman mm. out of the way, Stone Cold focused on his WWE Championship match against The Undertaker. Okay. Unfortunately, an old rival had come back to cost Austin oh, his man. shot at becoming WWE Champion. Brian Pillman distracted Stone Cold during the title match, allowing Undertaker to beat the Texas Rattlesnake. Pillman had aligned himself with Bret Hart and the Hart oh. Foundation months earlier, so Austin conveniently had all of his enemies in one group. Shawn Michaels also had beef with the Hearts, so he and Stone Cold decided to team up. They even defeated Owen Hart and the British Bulldog to win the WWE Tag Team Championship, the first title that Stone Cold won in WWE. Since their partnership wasn't built on a solid foundation, oh. Michaels and Steve Austin got into a fair bit of arguments. They even fought They're each so other close. while they were tag team champions, with the match ending in a double that's, disqualification that's when they attacked the referee. HBK would need time off due to an injury, forcing Austin to relinquish the tag team title. However, he was put in a match against Owen Hart and the British Bulldog to crown new champions. Yeah. Austin was given the opportunity to choose a new tag team partner, but he elected to fight Hart and Bulldog on his own. Despite not wanting a partner, a debuting Dude Love would come he to the ring and help partner. Stone Cold. Austin accepted Dude Love's assistance and the two won the match, making Stone Cold a two-time tag team champion. What was his name Stone Cold's feud at the Hart Foundation, and especially Owen Hart, continued to get hotter and hotter. Dude, Finally, at the 1997 SummerSlam, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Owen Hart went one-on-one -on -one for Hart's Intercontinental Championship. During the match, Owen would infamously botch a pile driver, Ooh. causing Stone Cold's neck to break. Stone Cold did manage to roll up Hart and win the match, but that didn't matter. Due to the injury, Steve Austin would relinquish both the I IC and Tag Team Championships. However, Austin wouldn't be out of the ring for too long. In September 1997, he while really Owen Hart was in the it. ring, Stone Cold attacked him from behind. This prompted Vince McMahon to get into the ring and have a word oh, with Austin. The, the Rattlesnake responded by giving yeah. his boss a Stone Cold Woo! Stunner, which kicked off a rivalry Stone between Cold Steve Austin Stunner. and Vince McMahon. Austin, though, still had some unfinished business with Owen Hart. At Survivor Series, Mr. 316 got his rematch with Hart, who was once again the Intercontinental Champion. Okay. Stone Cold defeated Owen and won the IC 
Dicey Championship. Okay. This also put an end to Stone Cold's rivalry with the Hearts. Soon after, Austin would be attacked by the Nation of Domination, allowing The Rock to steal the Intercontinental Belt. For weeks, the Brahma Bull would declare himself the best Intercontinental Champion ever. Mm. At D-Generation X In Your House, Stone Cold and The Rock had their first one-on-one -on -one match. The Rattlesnake won, and he took back possession yeah. of the Intercontinental Belt. Ooh. The next night, Vince McMahon ordered Austin to defend his championship against The Rock again. Due to his rebellious nature, Stone Cold <laughs> decided to forfeit the IC title and it's threw the doodle. belt into a river. It may have seemed like a bad decision, but it definitely wasn't. At the 1998 Royal Rumble, Stone Cold Strong won the me. match for a second time. This put Steve Austin in the main event of WrestleMania 14. He went up against the WWE Champion, Shawn Michaels, and to make it even bigger, Boxer Mike Tyson was made oh. the special guest enforcer. While Tyson had aligned himself with Michael's group, DX, oh. the baddest man on the planet, turned on HBK during the WrestleMania match. Tyson. This helped Stone Cold win and become WWE Champion. This was officially the point when Stone Cold Steve Austin became WWE's top star. Despite being arguably the biggest moment of Stone Cold's career, he didn't crack open a single beer. No Maybe way. WWE was short on cold ones, but they wouldn't have been <laughs> if they were on FUBAR. FUBAR is a great great place to That's hang out with commercial. friends and meet new people. You can rate users' profiles, oh, play you. a ton of games, find leaderboards, never... and much more. Mm. Everything you do on FUBAR earns you points, this all allowing you sounds... to level up and unlock more Illegal. features. <laughs> Something else that's cool about FUBAR is the virtual currency, FUBUCKS. I do you not can use gamble, them to buy drinks for friends, and play I do games, not date and help other members like on this, the site. No. FUBAR is an awesome nope. hub for wrestling fans like you and me. It already has a great wrestling community, and it'll be even bigger never and better had a once you join. Use the link in the description I mean, back to create in the your day, free Facebook FUBAR account and be sure to add me once it? you do. Thank you to FUBAR for sponsoring but this video. Was another one. Everyone was happy to see Stone Cold with okay, the, let's go the back title, to the video. Doesn't except matter. for Vince McMahon. McMahon first tried to change Steve Austin into a corporate champion, but the Rattlesnake had none of it. Since that didn't work, McMahon made it his mission to not only take the WWE Championship away from Steve Austin, mm. but also make Austin's life as miserable as possible. Aww. Vince would do things like make himself the special guest referee during Austin's championship matches Maybe. or having his stooges he interfere, but that company. didn't work. However, at the 1998 King of the Ring, it seemed like Vince McMahon had won. Austin defended the WWE title against Kane in a first blood match. The Undertaker interfered and accidentally hit Stone Cold with a chair, Oopsie. causing the Rattlesnake to bleed and for Stone Cold to lose the WWE title. Oopsie. This was only a small bump in Stone Cold's title reign. He beat Kane in a rematch the very next night and regained the WWE hey. Championship. McMahon was furious, so his next big plan was to have Stone Cold face Kane and The Undertaker in a triple threat match. The Brothers of Destruction ended up pinning Stone Cold at the same time, which led to Vince McMahon declaring the WWE title vacant. To crown a new champion, McMahon set up a match between Undertaker and Kane for the title, okay. with Steve Austin as the guest referee. Nice. Stone Cold was of course not interested in raising Undertaker or Kane's hand, but Vince warned Austin that if he didn't perform his proper duties, then he would fire Stone Cold. During the match, oh. not only did Austin get physically involved, no but he also ended up declaring himself the winner. <laughs> this is the thing. I was playing uh, 2K24, um, like trying it out. I think it was even the live stream on Bodymon channel, on this channel. Um, <laughs> and my friend was the referee as Steve Austin. And then he destroyed the other guy who, I think it was Instant Human. And he destroyed him playing <laughs> against me even though he was just a referee and he got himself disqualified and and i think at one point he even said hey yo this is what <laughs> really happened treadmill shush this is literally what happened in the actual match one time so i guess he was referring to this winner of course stone cold wasn't actually the WWE champion but he did get fired by vince mcmahon However, Steve Austin's firing only lasted a day as the next night, Shane McMahon yeah. would re-sign Stone Cold. The Texas Rattlesnake also got revenge on Vince though? by dragging him into the ring and pointing a gun Boy. to his head, which turned out to be a toy. Hey. With that out of the way, <laughs> Austin still wanted to regain the WWE Championship. A tournament was held Austin at the 1998 Survivor Steve. Series to crown a new sure. champion. Steve Austin entered, but lost in the semifinal round when Shane Aww. McMahon betrayed him. Despite losing the tournament, Stone Cold received Why a WWE Championship match the next night against the man who won the tournament, him. The Rock. 
Unfortunately for Austin, The Undertaker decided this was a good opportunity to get even with Stone Cold. Austin and Taker would fight in a Buried Alive match, which the Rattlesnake won thanks to interference from Kane. The victory also meant that Stone Cold qualified for the 1999 Royal Rumble. Unfortunately, Austin got entry number one. Strangely enough, Vince McMahon was the second entry. This led to a crazy Rumble match, but in the closing moments, it came down to just Vince and Austin in the ring. The WWE champion, The Rock, who'd allowed himself with McMahon, came to the rain and distracted Stone Cold, allowing Vince McMahon no, to eliminate him eliminate and win the Royal Rumble. Since he Vince didn't want to fight The, the Rock, Rumble, McMahon decided to here, forfeit please. his WrestleMania championship match. Apparently, Shittiest Vince didn't ever. know that if you forfeit your Royal Rumble victory, the runner-up gets the championship match. In this case, Stone Cold Steve yeah! Austin. Austin used this to get In a match face. with McMahon. I'll At the St. Valentine's Day Massacre pay-per-view, Vince McMahon and Stone Cold would face off in a steel cage match, with the winner receiving the WWE Championship match at WrestleMania. The Big Show made his WWE debut during the match by emerging from under the ring. However, the plan backfired when Big Show threw Stone Cold through the steel cage and, and caused Austin to win. Destroyed. With his WrestleMania match locked in, Austin raised hell in the following weeks before finally facing oh off against The Rock. God. Just like the year before, Stone Cold got the job done and reclaimed the WWE Championship. Yay. In the aftermath of WrestleMania 15, we actually saw Stone Cold and Vince McMahon working together. McMahon's daughter, Stephanie, was kidnapped by The Undertaker's Ministry of Darkness. Steve Austin would come and rescue her, which move Vince McMahon to help Austin. At the Over the Edge pay-per-view, Stone Cold defended the WWE title against The Undertaker. Vince McMahon was the special guest referee, and so was Shane McMahon, who was working with Undertaker. A chaotic match followed, and despite Vince's help, Austin lost the match and the WWE title. Things got even worse when it was revealed that Vince McMahon was secretly working with Taker and his alliance with Stone Cold was all a facade. <laughs> Vince's wife, Linda, as well as Stephanie were rightfully disgusted by what Vince had done, so they ended up giving disgusted. Steve Austin their 50% ownership of WWE, making Stone Cold CEO. No the Brown Snake would face way. Vince and Shane McMahon in a two-on-one handicap ladder match with 100% ownership of WWE on the line. Due to the briefcase, Mysteriously moving out of Austin's reach, the McMahons won and took back control. However, before the match, Stone Cold had scheduled a WWE Championship match between himself and The Undertaker. Steve Austin won the match, making him a four-time WWE Champion. Okay. The era of Austin continued nice. until SummerSlam, where he lost a triple threat match against Mankind and Triple H. The Texas Real State got his rematch at No Mercy, but due to The Rock accidentally attacking <gasps> Austin, the game was able to retain the title. All three men were gonna face off at the 99 Survivor Series, but before the match, Stone Cold Whoa. was hit by a car. And this not only made him unable was. to compete that night, but Triple Austin would also be out of action for almost 10 Triple months. The reason for this was to give Stone Cold time to undergo neck surgery for the injury he suffered uh, two years earlier at SummerSlam oh 1997. God, it it wouldn't be until September 2000 that Austin That's would be back sad. full time. Upon his return, Commissioner McFoley began an investigation to find out who ran Austin down. Infamously, it turned out it was Rikishi, and he no, did it for The Rock. Didn't like in his that, first match talking. back, Stone Cold fought Rikishi in a no holds barred match. The match was ruled a no contest when Austin tried to run Rikishi down with a truck, but Stone Cold had gotten his revenge. Later, Steve Austin fought Rikishi and Kurt Angle in a handicap match on Raw. Triple H came down to help Austin, but ended up attacking the Texas Rattlesnake. As it turned out, the game was He's behind so the car attack and it hired a Rikishi to take out Austin. Of course, the two had a match, which fittingly was at the 2000 Survivor Series. What was also fitting was that Austin lifted Triple H with a forklift and sent him falling down. Ooh! With that over, Stone Cold turned his there. attention to the 2001 Royal Rumble. The Rattlesnake won the entire thing, giving him a shot at the WWE Championship. His opponent was The Rock, and in Austin's home state of Texas, the Rattlesnake and the Brahma Bull went toe-to-toe -to -toe for the second time on the grandest stage of them all. The match was not without controversy. Vince McMahon okay. showed up and helped Austin, even giving him a chair to hit The Rock. Stone Cold won the match and the title, and also turned him heel by joining forces with Vince McMahon. Triple H would also side with Stone Cold, helping him defeat Rock in a rematch. Austin and Triple H would call themselves the two-man power trip and soon became WWE Tag Team Champions. However, their partnership came to an abrupt end when Triple H tore his quadricep during a tag team title defense. Austin still remained WWE 
be champion, but started to become whinier and demanded people respect him. At the same time, Shane and Stephanie McMahon had formed the Alliance, a group consisting of WCW and ECW wrestlers. Their mission oh, was mini. to take over WWE. This prompted Vince McMahon uh, to ask Stone Cold rebellion. to captain Team WWE and fight back against the Alliance. Austin initially with... refused, but soon came around and was back to his rebellious uh, self. Okay. At the Invasion pay-per-view, Team WWE nice. and the Alliance went one-on-one. -on -one. To everyone's shock, Austin turned on his teammates and sided with the Alliance. A few months later, the two sides had one more battle at Survivor Series in a winner-take-all match. Yeah. Austin captained the Alliance, but due to what? Kurt Angle turning on them, Brr. Team WWE was victorious and the Alliance was no more. Austin okay. was still WWE champion in the aftermath, but that would be okay. put to the test. At the final pay-per-view of 2001, Vengeance, a tournament was held to unify the WB and WCW World Championships. Austin defeated oh. Kurt Angle, but lost the unification match to Chris Jericho. Since oh. it worked well last time, Austin entered the 2002 Royal Rumble. He made it to the final four, Ooh. but was eliminated. Oh. However, he would earn a championship match against Chris Jericho so at No Way Out. At the same time, the NWO, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, and oh, Scott yeah. Hall, were prepared to make their return to WWE. They met Austin back Stage, but when Stone Cold refused and how to hear old from the was Hulk Hogan there? This guy doesn't like he's he always looked kind old, but never too old, and he looks like he never ages. Maybe now, like if we look at it, yeah, but it, it, during the career, um, he they had. went the extreme route and cost Austin his match against Jericho. This set up a feud between Stone Cold and the NWO, which saw Steve Austin defeat Scott Hall at WrestleMania 18. The next okay. few months were rather lackluster for the Rattlesnake. He lost a WWE Championship number one contenders match at Backlash to The Undertaker. He would then have a short feud with Big Show and Ric Flair. In real life, Stone Cold became frustrated with the creative direction of WWE mm. and things came to a breaking point in June 2002 when Austin was supposed to lose to Brock Lesnar in a King of the Ring qualifying match. Austin no-showed the event and ended up going home and wasn't seen for the rest of the year. Things eventually got patched up behind the scenes, and in early 2003, rumblings of a Stone Cold return began. The Raw general manager, Eric Bischoff, had been trying to sign Austin to the Raw brand. Bischoff was unsuccessful and was forced to tell Vince McMahon that he had failed. Jim Ross, however, was able to commit Steve Austin to come back, and this caused McMahon to put Eric Bischoff in a match with Stone Cold. Steve Austin officially made his return at the 2003 No Way Out pay-per-view, and of course, defeated Bischoff. After that, The Rock, who had recently returned as well, was upset that Austin had been voted Superstar of the Decade. The oh, Great One also mentioned that he had never know. defeated the Rattlesnake at WrestleMania. This set up a challenge that Stone Cold <laughs> accepted. At WrestleMania 19, Stone Cold and The Rock locked up for the third time on the grandest stage for them all. Red. The two had a legendary match, but so this time, The Rock was the winner. Unbeknownst to just about everyone at the time, but this was basically the end of Stone Cold Steve Austin's career. He'd be <gasps> back later that same year as the co-general manager of Raw, but he never wrestled. As the years went on, Austin would still be part of WWE, but yeah. it became less and less likely that fans would ever see him in a match again. Then, Aww. something interesting happened back, almost right? 20 years after Stone Cold's last match. In March 2022, Kevin Owens invited Steve Austin to be a guest on Pretty the KO cool. show at WrestleMania 38. Like Austin did accept, record. but that didn't stop Owens from insulting Stone Cold's home of Texas. Finally, on WrestleMania 38 Saturday, Owens and Steve Austin met in the ring. KO revealed that the real reason he invited the Texas Rattlesnake was to challenge him to a no-holds-barred match. Austin thought about it and decided to ask the crowd. After hearing a definite answer, Stone Cold decided it was time for one more match. Oh the God. fight began with both men throwing fists, with He's Austin eventually first. getting the advantage. After some stomps in the corner, Stone Cold threw Kevin Owens into the opposite side of the oh. ring. The WWE legend then sent KO to the outside. Owens tried to change the tide, but Stone Cold caught him with a clothesline. Kevin Owens finally got a break when he threw Austin's head into the ring post. The Canadian started throwing his own fists into the Texan's face and set up a table. Oh Stone Cold God. got back into it by countering and sending Kevin Owens crashing into the foreign object. Though, like, the wrestlers then went over the barricade so and began brawling amongst the fans. Steve Austin tried to suplex Kevin Owens, oh, but hard. KO countered and sent Austin falling to the concrete oh. floor. As the two went over the barricade, Stone Cold chucked a prone Kevin Owens onto the commentary table. 
table. With KO laid out, Austin dished out another series of fists while also chugging plenty of beer. Ah, yeah. Out of desperation, Kevin Owens stunned Steve Austin and tried to get a ride on Austin's ATV. <gasps> Stone Cold thought that was a good idea and drove KO to the top of the stage. The Texas Rattlesnake hit his opponent with not one, but two suplexes onto the hard surface. Oh. Austin then sent a wounded Kevin Owens rolling back into the ring while also grabbing another round of beers. Stone Cold got a bit too relaxed though as Owens struck with a stunner from out of nowhere. The Canadian then brought a chair into the ring. Right as Kevin Owens swun, Austin ducked, causing oh. the chair to hit Owens. Nice. What's funny is that Stone Cold had this exact same thing happen to himself <laughs> years earlier. Oh with Kevin God. Days, Stone Cold hit the stunner and got oh. the pinfall. Yay. Poor Kevin Owens couldn't catch a break. After the match, Stone Cold Steve Austin gave him one more stunner and then the man was arrested. I sort of have mixed feelings about this match. Having Stone Cold wrestle a match after nearly two decades was huge, and the match with Kevin Owens didn't seem to fit the hype. We didn't actually know if Austin was going to wrestle a match until about a minute before it happened. Part of me feels like the in-ring return of Stone Cold Steve Austin should have been hyped up a ton, rather than presenting it as an interview and then surprising everyone with a match. On the other hand, though, it was kind of fun with how casual it, it was. More. Having Steve Austin just kind of decide to have a match right there on the spot gave it this fun, laid-back attitude, and considering what the match was like, I think that worked out the best. Okay. Austin and Owens' brawl wasn't a five-star wrestling match. Yeah. It was just a fun fight. Had WWE I mean, announced like, that to Kevin be Owens honest and- with you, like, Kevin himself is, for me personally, like, he's really good, but I would not put him on the same level as The Rock or John Cena. And Austin is a legend, but he's old, you know, like, th this is the thing you cannot expect from this match to be like, wow, 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 wow. Although they could, if they wanted, they could have hyped it way more. And Stone Cold were going to have a match, and this is what happened. It would have felt a bit weird. But with Austin just deciding on the spot to have a match, the No Holds Barred brawl fit pretty well. Stone Cold also appeared the next night, confronting his mm -hmm. old rival, Vince McMahon. Yeah. Even though McMahon took the stunner incredibly poorly, it was still a fun moment. As of right now, this is where Stone Cold's Vince, career get ends. get out of here! However, now that he's finally wrestled Austin again, really this opens there. the doors for Steve Austin to have more matches. That would be great, but I also don't want this video to be outdated, so I'm fine if Stone Cold doesn't wrestle again. After a video like this, though, I need a drink. Hit the link on screen to check out Food nah, Bar real fun with real people. And coffee. <laughs> you need just healthy stuff. Um, Kevin Owen is just a Stone Cold super fan that got the best time of his life. That's a bit mean. That's such a mean comment. Like, if you think about it, it, there is truth in it. And I feel like Kevin would be really happy and satisfied that happened. But you cannot just put it like that because they are discrediting everything Kevin ever accomplished. You can have your own opinion, but Stone Cold's theme song, in my opinion, is the most iconic and greatest wrestling theme ever. I don't know very well his theme song or from a lot of wrestlers. I'm still learning. For me right now, Cody's one and Seth freaking Rollins one because with Seth's theme song the whole audience engages and it's like i heard it's like a type of a tribute to bray wyatt which is so emotional there will never be another wrestler like austin so true i'm okay with him having the one last match it was dallas it was wrestlemania he took a suplex on the outside so he uh, took bigger bumps than i expected and it was genuinely exciting and fun does this mean that we are not gonna see him ever again because i have a feeling he might appear sooner than later and he doesn't have to be in a match and physically perform just be there talk on the mic be a commentator a referee give us a bit of your charm i want to see that for sure because i'm sad that i missed his whole career but that is it guys for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more i also have a second channel bunnymon tv where i upload live reactions to different type of content and if you want more wwe content from me reactions to wrestlemania heads up to wrestlemania 40 as well as keeping up with smackdown as well as raw then check out my patreon patreon.com slash support bunny i will leave a link in the description down below thanks so much for watching have a wonderful day and see you tomorrow with a brand new video bye